the Santa Monica Pier, one of the most recognizable landmarks in all of Southern California. It has played host from everything from concerts to paddleboard racing, and today it adds yet another event to its storied history, the Arnold Pro Strongman USA. Thanks for joining us, everybody, here today in beautiful Santa Monica, California. I'm Sean Woodland with Dr. Bill Crawford. We certainly could not have picked a more perfect day for this event, and we definitely could not have picked a more appropriate location. A very historic uh, place to have a competition for strongman. This is where Arnold got his start at Muscle Beach. In 1977, Arnold's book, The Education of a Bodybuilder, sent a shockwave through a lot of people's lives and got a lot of barbells and a lot of hands. This is the final qualifying event for the Arnold Strongman Classic that will take place in March. So far, seven men have qualified. Three more spots are up for grabs, and today's event will determine who takes those three spots. There is a three-way tie on top of the qualifying point standings between Jerry Pritchett, Machaj Belshak, and that man, Machuj Kieliszkowski. This is a competition to see who has the most consistent day, and none of the athletes want to just do their best. They want to win today. These are professional athletes, and they all came here to win. They've told me that. Kieliszkowski was certainly impressive in that stone-to-shoulder last year in Columbus, Ohio. He's looking to get back and improve on that performance. Matchaj Belshak did not have the best performance last year at the Arnold. He finished 10th, looking to improve on that this year. Yes, but he has an automatic qualifier as a winner in the series. Well, if, if, you had a, if you had a win in the series, so that's what he's looking for today. Yeah, so Belshak looking to build some momentum as he heads to Columbus. And finally, Jerry Pritchett, who's looking to get back to Columbus for the seventh time to compete in the Arnold Strongman Classic. And we'd love to have him go and, and try the 500 kilogram deadlift uh, record, which everyone's talking about. This is the uh, focus of the next uh, phase of the strongman, which is the big uh, uh, crystal of uh, the uh, the big uh, crown jewel in uh, Columbus. And earlier today, Bridget spoke with Dr. Bill Crawford. A couple of questions for you. So, what do you think are the keys for your success today? I just meant to be consistent in all the events. For the proper athletes like this, you can't afford to have a bad event. So it's going to be efficient at everyone and make sure up on points on everyone to have be at top of the overall. Okay, I guess another question that it, that everyone's got is uh, what kind of uh, deadlift you're looking at today? Because anybody that knows Jerry Pritchett and Strongman thinks about deadlift. I know you also hold the IPL world record in powerlifting as well as the Strongman world record. Yeah, it really it just kind of depends on how it goes today. You know, where we end up, we're starting at 700, taking every attempt. So I think that will probably hold the numbers down a little bit. Um, but you know, the main goal is Columbus and, and going after a big one there. So I don't want to leave too much out in here. Thank you, Jerry. You heard Pritchett say the main goal is Columbus, and that's what it is all about here today in Santa Monica. There are five events, some of them similar to what these men will be seeing when they get to Columbus in the Arnold Strongman Classic. We are going to start big. Event one of Fire Truck Pull. More on that in just a second. But the log press, the deadlift, and the rogue sandbag carry will be similar to events that they will see in Columbus, as will the Atlas Stone to shoulder, but that fire truck pulled right out of the gates. That is a heavy, heavy implement they will be facing. The larger athletes tend to do a little bit better with these uh, with these uh, uh, truck pulls and, and uh, plane pulls, but also it's about getting your hips low and, and keeping, keeping everything uh, uh, in line, also keeping the momentum of the implement going as well. The order in which they will attack that 1952 Mack fire engine. Jerry Pritchett will lead things off, followed by Machaj Belshak, two of the men who are tied atop the qualifying point standings. And then Machaj Kieliszkowski will go eighth. He is the third man in that three-way tie. But this is just all about brute strength. But we mentioned it earlier, the surface on which they're pulling this engine could come into play here. Absolutely. Some of the athletes are concerned about this wooden surface, which is something they've typically not done a truck pull or a, or a plane pull on. The other piece is that uh, the implement itself, you never know how something's going to move on a surface. So it's a, it's a very heavy object. They've got to stay low and use their levers and also their body weight. Larger athletes tend to do a little better with these, with these types of uh, pulling events. Jerry Pritchett up first, finished sixth at the Arnold Strongman Classic last year, looking to get back to Columbus for the seventh time in his career. His best finish at that event was in 2017 when he 
finish in third place. Well, as a really large athlete, 6'4", 360 pounds, but also with that prodigious deadlift strength, that shows that his overall uh, total body strength is absolutely astronomical. So this should be a good event for him. Each athlete will try to pull that fire engine 30 feet as quickly as they possibly can. You want to get your feet moving. You want to keep your back as perpendicular to the surface of the pier as possible. And you want to use those long levers, your legs, to really push against the, the surface and to uh, get, get some momentum created. Then once it starts, you don't want to let up. And then, then there's a component of endurance. That strength endurance is very, very important towards the end of this event. Jerry Pritchett, one of three men in a tie in the points standings as far as who gets into the Arnold Strongman Classic. He is tied with not just Belshock, Mateusz Kieliszkowski. All have 25 points. Two of them are guaranteed spots at the Arnold Strongman Classic. As long as one of them wins this event, all three will go. The men who could throw a wrench into this whole thing are Jitz Kramer out of the Netherlands, Mateusz Ostaszewski from Poland, and Brian Clark. If one of the three, of those three win today's event, Kieliszkowski, Belshak, or Pritchett will get left out. We'll deal more with that as this event goes on and as the point standings unfold. And that is the line where they need to pull. And a couple of these athletes I've not seen uh, compete before. Their feet need to get across that line. A couple of the athletes uh, from uh, the Netherlands, Kramer and... Okay, first tire. So the first tire has to cross that line. So a couple of these athletes, Kramer and Clark, uh, are newcomers to this series. And so they could be, they could be factors here. In other words... We don't really know what they're going to do. I've, I've uh, talked with them. Uh, they, they're well prepared and they're, and they're ready to go. But honestly, they might have an event or two that really throws the kilter on uh, some of the plans of the guys trying to qualify for the, for the Arnold Strongman Classic. Yeah, for guys like Brian Clark, Ostaszewski, and Yitz Kramer, they have to win to get into the Arnold Classic in March. We are at the Santa Monica Pier. This is the main arena that has been set up for the competition. The fire engine pull is being held just behind or really in front of it. So the east side of the pier where Jerry Pritchett is getting set to pull that 17,000 pound 1952 Mack fire engine. You really want to get as strong a start as possible. So he's going to put his, his hips his, and his legs into this as much as possible, but also pulling as hard as possible uh, on that rope to get some momentum going. Pritchett has had a long career in strongman training. They've, they're adding weight, so 17,000 pounds plus a number of men that are, that are climbing up onto the truck. Yeah, at that point, what's a couple hundred more pounds once you pass 17,000? But Pritchett has been training in strongman ever since he was 15 years old. And his first event that he ever competed in was in 2008. It was in Phoenix, Arizona. He finished second in that event, and that's really what launched his career and drove him to train harder. And now here he is trying to get into the Arnold Strongman Classic for the seventh time in his career. He told me his, uh, he started powerlifting when he was 15 and deadlifted 460 pounds. So... <laughs> He got a good start. You saw him right before he started this event. He was warming up his heels, really trying to make sure that he's he's got his, some good flexibility going in the heels and Achilles tendons. Come on, Jerry, let's go. Let's go, Jerry. And Pritchett is underway. He's taking the strain. He's pulling. He's pulling. He's pulling. He's, pulling. he's just got to get it started. He's got to get it going. So here we are. We're down to look at his feet are slipping a little bit. That surface, the shoes that he's wearing. He's really digging in. He's trying to get something going. It seems there's a technical issue. So Pritchett for nearly half a minute was given it all he had. And now he will have to reset and go at it again as the, the judges are discussing something here. So Pritchett gets a break, 
and this was the start. It looks like he's slipping. As I had said before, I don't know if it's just the, uh, the his shoe selection for this event. A lot of times uh, they'll wear the climbing shoes, but I'm not sure what climbing shoes will do for you on wood. The stone climbing uh, shoes or the rock climbing shoes are typically quite good for this event, but I'm not sure why uh, uh, why his feet would have slipped like that. Was there a technical issue with the uh, with the truck itself? The Pritchett's on the left. Brian Clark, who often trains with Pritchett's on the right, the two of them discussing some strategy. As Clark is one of the men who could really throw a big wrench into this thing, he. Okay, so we have to turn the engine on to let the air brakes off. So that's the that's the technical piece that we're getting. And so I assume that they're going to let him uh, uh, take another second. Now you could look at it at two ways. He expended some energy to try to get that pull started. That's one thing. And the second, the second possibility is that, you know, it actually let him warm up a little bit. So we've got all the fans there standing by watching the event. And, and sometimes these technical issues, people understand it. They're very, they're very patient. They just want to have the athletes have the best possible chance to, uh, to, to pull this fire engine. We really want to see this, and I'm sure we're going to get a chance to. It's hard enough to pull 17,000 pounds. It's even more difficult when the emergency brake is on. Absolutely. But the, uh, the other piece is uh, this is why order is so important. If you're the first athlete to go, these kind of technical issues get worked out on you. But in strongman, you'll have, uh, you'll have a rotating order. It's Every, a packed house here. Absolutely. All these so, fans started showing up early, and, and it's standing room only here at the Santa Monica Pier. So they give, a, they give the athlete that's, uh, that, that uh, wins the first event, they let him go, go last in the second event. And what that does is it let, lets that athlete, lets the athlete create a, uh, uh, a little more space between the other athletes. And here's our second event, the log press, 385 pounds, 175 kilograms. They have to clean and press each and every time. And that is one of the events that will be similar to what the qualifying men will face at the Arnold Strongman Classic. They will have to lift the Austrian Oak, which is much heavier, 454 pounds in Columbus, Ohio. Yes, and that's uh, the Austrian Oak is a, is a legendary implement, no question about it. But with multiple attempts at the 385, that's uh, the, the, that's that's going to be uh, a good uh, test to see if they can take on the the Austrian Oak. As they ready the fire engine, here's one more look at the men who have already qualified for the Arnold Strongman Classic, the top seven. Pritchett, Belshock, and Kieliszkowski are tied in the point standings. Those points are based on how you finish in the Arnold Pro Strongman World Series events. If you win one of those events, you automatically get in. Okay, looks like they're pulling it up. Uh, we have some uh, Santa Monica firemen here, so hopefully they're expert in, in uh, controlling this beast. I've pulled fire trucks and fire engines before, and the first thing you have to do is just get it started. And sometimes it feels impossible, but you dig down deeper and deeper, and you get a little momentum, a little momentum, and a little more momentum, and you keep it going. And that's absolutely going to be true for this this uh, large fire engine as well. They didn't take any of the guys off. Sean, I think they're going to keep it as heavy as it was. At this point, why not? <laughs> and maybe if Pritchett slips these guys a few bucks, they can step on the gas a little bit and help them down the pier here. Uh, I think the other athletes might have something to say about that. No shenanigans here in the opening event. Okay. Yes, yeah, so they're, they're sweeping off some of the, uh, the uh, wood shards and uh, a little bit of pulp that's come off of the wood. And again, that's exactly the reason that uh, the athletes were concerned about the surface. Uh, one of the things is this wood, you know, this, the fog comes in, it's on the ocean, and on a daily basis, this wood goes through a lot of stress and so that it becomes a little bit fragile. But we're trying to clean it up a little bit and keep it going. I know anytime you can add to an implement, Anytime you can add to an implement uh, uh, with some 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 uh, some of the men on the truck, that can be helpful. So they're just pulling it, make sure that it's okay. They're testing it. Pritchett should be recovered by now. They strapped him into that thing, and the poor guy wasted about 30 seconds of effort when the brakes weren't released. This is the first of five events that we will be seeing today. 
After this, it is the log press. We just showed you that earlier. Then the last man standing deadlift. A little bit of a different format than we're used to. Every man will make an attempt at every weight. Once you fail, you are out. Then it's sort of made to simulate a stone a little bit. It's an odd object. They're carrying it up and down the arena floor here for distance. And then finally, it's a 400-pound Atlas stone to shoulder. Okay, so we're going to our uh, we're going to the next athlete, uh, maybe to give Jerry a chance to recover a little bit. Yep, that's and Machaj Belshock, who's now strapped into the fire engine. Interesting, the first the two athletes that are going to be. But Belshak has begun 30 feet four time, and he's got that thing moving. There he goes. Took him, a, took him a couple of seconds to get some momentum going. There he goes. He's, get, he's got, he's low, his back is perpendicular to the surface. He's got good foot movement. He's pulling, pulling, pulling. Got to get that first tire over the line. There we go. The bell shack is done in a hurry. We'll have to wait to get the official time, but he is first, so that will be the early mark to beat with eight competitors to go. 19.57 seconds. They don't have a lot of oxygen for an interview. You've got to give them seconds at least. He's got to be very happy with that result. Put the microphone in his mouth. He's Slovenian, but it's bell shack. And Belshak, one of the three men tied atop the point standings, looking to get back to the Arnold Strongman Classic for the second time in his career. And he got that thing moving quickly and was able to accelerate the entire way down that 30-foot trek. If you notice, technically, he's got a little difference with his pull. He had his left hand. As an overhand, uh, as an overhand puller, as opposed to having the underhand approach. Belshock returns with his fellow competitors. Well, Heinle, Martins Vesey's is there. Jerry Pritchett all discussing some strategy. So Belshock sets the early time to beat at 19.57 seconds, and that'll bring up John Francois Caron, who has already qualified. For the 2019 Arnold Classic, he is the 2018 Arnold Classic Africa champion. These guys, the governor might be pulling the truck here, but we just saw Belshack next. So that gives us an easy mark to uh, look at, just under 20 seconds. So that uh, is the uh, time runs out and they get closer to the line. 20 seconds uh, is really the kind of the cutoff. He won the Arnold Sports Classic. He won the pro. But I, but I think what we were talking about early on in the event, the two concerns would be the weight of the implement and also to the surface itself. And the athletes were concerned about exactly the right things. These are professionals, and they understand what they're up against. And Arnold Schwarzenegger is here alongside Mario Lopez. A lot of celebrity sightings at the Santa Monica Pier today. Mateusz out of Slovenia, JF Caron, Canadian, he is a powerhouse, John. He's a monster. Now, if you look, we've got... I think Arnold's ready to strap that on and go for it himself. I'm sure he would love to, as Jean-Francois Caron is the winner of Canada's Strongest Man for eight straight years. 2011 through 2018, he has won that competition. Very, very experienced competitor. Um, he's he's pulled the heavy implements before. I did speak with him about that. But the uh, surface again, I've, I haven't seen his footwear. That sounds like uh, that sounds like that might have a part of what uh, some of the athletes are really concerned about right now is what they're actually have on their feet. The Corona is ready to go, and he is given the go command. There he goes. Those massive arms and shoulders, along with his hips. Getting the pull as well as the drive with his legs. 19.57 seconds is the early mark to beating Caron. Looking like he might be able to chase that down. He's moving his feet very quickly. Oh, just over 20 seconds. 
We'll wait to get his official time, but it was close as Belshock, the first competitor to go, 19.57 seconds, and Corone was close to that. And again, John Francois Corone has already qualified, but he will beat Belshock's time. So he is now your leader, 19.40 seconds. Wow, what a, what a close competition. This is exactly what we want to see. We want to see the, every athlete's best, and we want to see a great competition. And here we are, just with a, just a, that tenth of a second separating the two athletes. So here it is, Jerome, you knew the time to be was Belshack with 19.57 seconds. J.F. Garot just did it. 19.44 19.4 is now the new mark to beat set by J.F. Carone. That is Brian Clark looking on. Brian Clark has got to win this competition to get to the Arnold Classic in March. He's a former recon Marine with the 2nd Battalion in Camp Lejeune, North Carolina. I know that's close to where you reside, Dr. Bill. Yes, yeah, very close to where I live now. Um, and he said that uh, he uh, got involved with straw man and placed second in his first competition. So he's a very he's a natural. Means he's a nat he's a natural strong man. The start is everything. If you can get the truck going. Nineteen four four. Nineteen point four four seconds is the time to be for Brian Clark as he is now the third competitor up. He's out of Phoenix, Arizona, thirty one years old, often trains with Jerry Pritchett. And this guy's been training with Jerry Pritchett. Pritchett's a legend in the strong man community been for twenty years. So hopefully the strength and endurance training that he's done as a Marine will help him with these types of events. Brian Clark is ready, and we will wait for the judge's signal. He's mentally visualizing getting down. He's mentally visualizing having his back as flat to the surface of the pier as possible. He's getting his hips, getting his hips into the into the pole to start with. Mentally visualizing. There we go. Brian Clark is off. 19.44 seconds. The mark he's trying to chase down. Arnold Schwarzenegger there to cheer him on. I mean, if you're not motivated by that, I don't know what's going to get you across the finish line. And here comes Brian Clark, and he is in. Wow. I got to say, Governor, what was it like cheering him on watching the American Bulls? 22.81. Right now, that would be third for Brian Clark. That, that was a great effort. Well, that, that just shows that Arnold's really involved with these competitions. This series means a lot to him. And if you've been following him on Instagram, you've seen that he has been posting pictures all weekend long with the athletes. They've been shooting some videos with them at uh, Gold's Gym in Venice Beach. As Ronald Heinle, another man who has already qualified for the Arnold Classic in March. He won the 2018 Arnold Classic Australia event. Still trying to chase down the top mark that was set by Jean-Francois Corone. 19.44 seconds as the man from Estonia getting ready to go. Yes, there's. Uh, I've, I've spoken with him before, and so there's not a lot of uh, strongman opportunity in uh, in Slovenia. So this is a this is a terrific uh, this is a terrific opportunity for him. Now next up, ladies and gentlemen, in the truck pull our fourth competitor out of Estonia, Rando Heinla. So Heinla from Estonia. Traditionally, not a lot of opportunity in strongman there. Off to a solid start. But it looks like he's behind the pace set by Jean-Francois Caron. 19.44 seconds is your time to beat. Notice how there's slack in the rope, and that kind of tells how fast he's going because if, if he's not able to pull, the, pull it fast enough, there'll be some slack in the rope. He was accelerating the whole way, as we discussed before. in at 21. 
.22 seconds, and that means Jean-Francois Caron, still your leader, as we are through four of our nine competitors. He did get a good start, but uh, sometimes hand speed actually plays, plays a role with, with these uh, truck pulls. Really reaching out, really reaching out with his hands and pulling back. But the rope had some slack and some give side to side as well. Matthias Ostaszewski is up next. Another guy who needs to win this competition in order to get himself to the Arnold Classic. He was there last year, finished 10th. His best event finish, he was tied for 6th in a Pollen's wheel. So this man does have some power. Arnold giving him personal uh, giving him personal encouragement. You got it. You're on a roll. Keep going, keep going. Don't give up. Give up. Keep going. Pump, pump. Yes. Ostaszewski is approaching the finish line, now starting to pick up some momentum. Fast and faster. You're running. Yeah, now you're talking. Yeah, there we go. And he is in. Good time. Good time. And a handshake from Arnold Schwarzenegger. Take my title away. <laughs> Good country. <Adrian. laughs> All right, can you believe this days. young man is only 20 years old? 20.38 20 seconds for Mateusz Ostaszewski. <laughs> so he now is in third place with four men remaining. The Polish athletes in the past have been very good at dynamic and in strength endurance events. The uh, legendary five-time World Strongest Man winner, uh, uh, Mariusz Pucinowski, he was very good at, at uh, strength endurance events. And so uh, Ostaszewski shows that, uh, that, that quality as well. Jitz Kramer is up next out of the Netherlands, looking to make his first ever appearance at the Arnold Strongman Classic. He also needs to win this competition to get in. Kramer trying to track down the time to beat still belongs to Jean-Francois Caron, 19.44 seconds. The tall Dutch athlete has long levers. Look when he puts his foot down, he can push back further. And he's going to have a shot surface. here. Maintaining foot surface. The longer your foot's on the ground. And he has the new time to beat it. 19.38 seconds for Kramer. Wow. Just beating John francois Caron across the finish line. That is huge for Kramer, who again needs to win this competition to get himself into the Strongman Classic in March. But this taller athlete, notice he has those long legs. And when he puts his foot down and he maintains pressure on, on the surface to push off and continue to push off, and that long leg length continue to develop power. The longer your foot is on the surface, the longer your foot is on the surface, the more the more speed and power that you can that you can continue to uh, develop as you pull the, the uh, fire engine. Up next, Matthews Killers Koski out of Poland, and this young man, extremely impressive last year at the Arnold Strongman Classic when he finished fourth, put on what you called one of the most impressive performances you had ever seen in that stone to shoulder event. Absolutely, I think every every person that had been around Strongman for some time. We all just shook our head when we and looked at each other. I've, I've never seen anything that's that uh, singularly impressive compared to the competition. Put that 410-pound stone at the Arnold Classic on his shoulder four different times and won that event easily. Gunnar Skoski's ready to go. Arnold is right there. 19.38 seconds is now your time to beat. So he was able to develop some momentum right off with his first pull. Had a little slip. 
And that one's going to be close. We'll have to see how that slip may have affected him. But, but he demolishes the time to beat 17. Point nine one seconds. Wow. That's unofficial. But Kalish Koski just hammering through that and now has a new time to beat. And that includes, that, that includes a little bit of a slip. This young man is a terrific athlete as well as a very strong, very strong athlete. And this kid has a bright future ahead of him. And he is just starting to round into form. He does have an incredible future. Right now has the event lead. Martins Lissis is, is typically very, very good at, at uh, odd types of events. He is a Moss Wrestling champion, actually world champion. He defeated an undefeated Moss wrestler from Russia several years ago to be world champion. So anything that presents a, an off-balance implement or challenge, he is very good at. For those of you who don't know what Moss Wrestling is, it's a, a variation of stick wrestling. So you can go on uh, line and look at it. It is certainly a battle of pure power between two men. Lisi's is already qualified. He's the 2018 Arnold Classic Europe champion, and he is underway. Looking to track down Kieliszkowski's time of 17.91 seconds. Good foot speed, good hand speed. He's taking the slack out of the rope quickly. A lot of hip power, running with it at the end. And then just drops the rope and gets himself across. Arnold, Arnold giving. In 19.19 seconds, so not enough to give him the event lead, but it will slot him right now into second place. Jerry Pritchett is the only man left. So Mateusz Kieliszkowski looking to lock up nine points here with an event win. Kieliszkowski wants as much distance as, as possible between between himself and the other two athletes that are looking to qualify for the for the Arnold Strongman Classic. Yeah, two of the three are guaranteed a spot. Jerry Pritchett is one of those three men tied to top the point standings. Now, if one of them were to win this whole event, all three would go because no one can catch them in the point standings. Where it gets tricky is that either Yitz Kramer, Mateusz Ostaszewski, or Brian Clark were to win this event. Then it comes down to who finishes ahead of whom between Pritchett, Belshock, and Kieliszkowski in this event. But we still have four events to go before we get there, so a lot needs to happen. Pritchett is ready to go, and Arnold Schwarzenegger is right there to cheer him on. The last chance to track down Kieliszkowski's top time is 17.91 seconds. There we go. This is more what I was expecting to have him pull this truck. Good foot speed, good hand speed. Killers Kossi's going to win the event as Pritchett gets himself across the finish line. 21.22 seconds for Pritchett. A good effort from Jerry Pritchett, but Mateusz, Mateusz Kieliszkowski will win the event at 17.91 seconds. That, that doesn't surprise me, actually. A, a dynamic event like this, it also has a component of strength endurance. As I said, uh, Kieliszkowski is a terrific athlete, as well as a very strong uh, competitor. You mentioned the slack on that rope, and it looked like Pritchett was having problems keeping that thing taut because he was moving so quickly. Yes, and sometimes they, that's that's what happens. Even sometimes an athlete will just drop the rope, and uh, the, the leader, in other words, someone who will actually walk with the athlete and pull the rope out of the way will just take the take the rope out of the way because if the athlete is, is, uh, is able to drop his hips and really get good momentum, pulling with his hands will get that out of the will actually impede his progress. Sometimes he'll just drop the rope and keep moving. Great crowd on hand here at the Santa Monica Pier on a picture-perfect day for the Arnold Pro Strongman USA, the final qualifying event for the 2019 Arnold Strongman Classic. And now 
Arnold Schwarzenegger will lead the athletes into the arena. And so they're all vying for an opportunity to compete in the world's heaviest strongman competition. Year after year, the heaviest weights lifted, the most epic implements are always at the, the uh, Classic in Columbus, Ohio. And remember last year at the Arnold Strongman Classic, it was Hathor Bjornsson who set the world deadlift record on that elephant bar, 1,041 pounds, as more and more people are filing in here. And this year at the Arnold Strongman Classic, if someone, someone were to beat that record of 1,041 pounds in the deadlift event, there is a $50,000 check waiting for them. He has to pull uh, the, uh, 500, the magical 500 kilograms or 1,100 pounds. So here comes Arnold, and look at the crowd that's that's assembled here. Look at the enthusiastic crowd that we have here, Matt. Look how much enthusiasm there is here. I think the crowd is more pumped up than you and me are. Never! Never! I'm but I like you. this crowd, because this I'm crowd dying. knows look these athletes them. thrive on the energy. So ladies and gentlemen, let's give Arnold Schwarzenegger a warm welcome at his event! Hey. Look at that. Look at this. I told you, this people. Oh, are... my goodness. Look who's oh showing. Oh, my God. It's Lou Ferrigno. The, the Hulk. The Hulk is here. Look at that. Amazing. Now we have to be very careful because this guy is really powerful. I want to say, first of all, thank you for putting this great event on and also the firefighters. But I was very honored to be in the first World Strongest Man, you know, with Franco because we had a chance to show that bodybuilders like us are strong as we look. And it's amazing, 40 some years later, how it's such a great event. And I want to say thank you for having this event here because people in California need something like this to respect the admiration, the excitement, and the adulation, everything. Isn't it great when you see the Hulk being so enthusiastic? Uh, thank you very much for <laughs> coming a... out here, supporting the firefighters. Thank you so much for coming out here and being such a great friend of not only myself, but also of the bodybuilders and the world's strongest men that are out here competing, and also the firefighters that will be competing later on. So this is really great. Thank you so much, Lou, for being here. Also, I want to say, you know, being a deputy sheriff for 15 years in California, what the first responders, and how important that the firefighters, they risk their lives doing this. So please pay attention and give a contribution. But thank you so much for coming, and thank you, Arnold. Thank you, Lou. You still thank look you. great. Let's give him a big hand to Lou Ferrigno, the Hulk, and my great friend. Thank, thank you. you, Lou. Right. Thank you. I got to say, how great is it? We know you and Lou had a legendary rivalry, but today is about building bridges. Today is about something bigger. So right now, we're going to turn the stage over to you, Governor, because okay. you can explain what no, this but event first, is all about. First of all, I think let's go over here with the camera because Lou's wife is here also, Carla. You don't never forget the other half, okay? Or maybe even the better half. Very nice. <laughs> Good to have you here. You look fantastic and in great shape, okay? Great to see, huh? You tell everybody who she is? Of course. You remember her? What kind of a question is that? <laughs> Do I remember her? <laughs> I, I always will remember Carla because remember, that's your better half. Remember Lou, okay? Thank you. All right, it's good to see you both. Yeah, thank you for coming out here. And then we have Franco Colombo here. Come on, let's give him a big hand. Franco Colombo, Mr. Olympia, and world's strongest man in his weight category. Deadlifting 740 pounds in his great heyday. For the build up. Great for the build up. Yeah. Exactly, Franco. It's great to see you here and it's great to have you support powerlifting and the world's strongest man and all those muscles here. It's great to see you. You know what? How you cannot be here? You have to be a present and, and see everything. I, can you believe that he says the wood comes from Austria? Exactly. The, you come with your son. Yes. Let's not give all the secrets away, Franco, okay? It's good to have you here. Let's give a big hand to Franco Colombo. Anyway, I just want to say it's great to have you all here. We came up with this idea of doing the world's strongest man competition here at the Santa Monica Pier because um, there used to be Muscle Beach right next door here. But they got rid of Muscle Beach, which I think was a big mistake. And they moved it down to Venice. So now the weightlifting platform is down in Venice. But we wanted to bring some muscles back here. And let's not forget, let's not forget that 
everything starts from that world's strongest man base. Because even bodybuilding came from the world's strongest man competition from Eugene Sander, who was like the first one that had muscles, tremendous muscles, and also was one of the world's strongest men. And the weightlifting came from that sport. Powerlifting came from that sport. And bodybuilding came from that sport. So this is the basis. This is why I'm so passionate about the world's strongest man. That's why I'm promoting it all over the world. We have it in six different continents throughout the year. We have those competitions. And it's great that for the first time we have the world's strongest man here in Santa Monica at this beautiful historic pier. So let's give a big hand to those world's strongest men that came from all over the world. And then we started the dialogue about, you know, here's if we sell a thousand tickets, that's how much money we can make. And this is if we sell a thousand t-shirts, this is how much money we can make. And all this dialogue was going on about how much money we can make. And I said, well, wait a minute, guys. We don't really need the money. We have plenty of money. I said, let's give that money that we make every single dollar that we make here in proceeds. Let's give it to the firefighters here in California. So I was so happy that everyone agreed because I can tell you, when I was governor of California, I saw firsthand the kind of miracles that those guys and those women perform when they fight the fires. I've seen them being up there in the mountains 24 hours, 48 hours, 36 hours without any sleep, fighting the fires and fighting and fighting. So this is why I saw firsthand that we have the most powerful, the most energetic, the most courageous, and the best firefighters in the world. So let's give a big hand to our great, great firefighters that are risking their lives every single day to save ours. So I'm delighted that we could put this together and that we're gonna see the firefighters also having a strongman competition here the world's strongest firefighter. We want to find out who is the world's strongest firefighter. So I'm really looking forward to that event. But anyway, you will see four more lifts and kind of crazy things that these guys are doing here. So let's go and get going with our show. I kick it back to Matt. Thank you very much, Matt. Thank you, let's Governor. Give a big, let's give a big hand to Matt for coming in here extra and doing the MCing. And also, great, great thank you to you John also. John Anderson. Yeah, it's thank really you, Arnold. Fantastic. Thank I you mean, so uh, much. I mean, I, I, there's a lot of things popping up on your body. I mean, <laughs> Jesus. I mean, this is like unbelievable. Look at the triceps. This is like a, look at the traps. What is going on up here? Well, Arnold, the delta, gotta... Oh my God, look at this delta. I cannot even, it, it, it doesn't even go into my hand. Not big hands. What is, well, Arnold, I'm going to tell the you, you, the you were the one who threw the first spark in this whole thing right here. I know. It's, it's, um, it's fantastic. You look unbelievable. Let's give him a good hand. Let's do a, do a double bicep shot quickly for the guys. Come on, I hold your mic. Do a double bicep shot. And right over there. And right over there with this crowd. Very nice. Look at that. The monster. <laughs> Good to see you. Thank you so much for being here. And thank you, Arnold. Yes. It's a pleasure to be here yeah. with you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Now, I got to say, I've been your apprentice. You were the boss. You've never pointed anything out on my body that was bulging, Governor. That, I'm feeling a little neglected right here. But right now, we're going to continue this competition because today we are going to crown a strong man here at Santa Monica, and they're going to go to the world championship. I think Arnold Schwarzenegger is having the best time out of anybody out here. Here are your results after the first event. Taylor Skoski picks up the win by nearly two seconds over Martin Thesis. Yitz Kramer is third, and then followed by J.F. Carone. When we come back, event number two, the log press, and we will meet the athletes competing in the Arnold Pro Strongman USA.
longest man, he'll be going first. Also out of Arizona, a man who's been to this sport for 20 years, Jerry Pritchett. Put your hands together, everyone. This guy is a B64 370. And then out of Estonia, Rano Heinla. Six one three zero one won the Arnold competition in Australia, and then the youngest athlete at just twenty years of age, Matush Ostashevsky. I saw that dude last night. He had like seven Polish sausages. He was loving it. And next up, out of Slovenia, Mariusz Belshak. We saw him go first in that truck pole. Now, we're going to introduce him. We had a little development. We mentioned it. He was battling an injury on that truck pull. Despite his remarkable pull, he pulled a hamstring. He's not going to be competing, but he deserves your respect because he's already qualified for the World Championships out of Quebec. Give it up for J.F. Caron! And next up... Yitzi Kramer out of the Netherlands! And how about that eyewear? This man isn't just strong, he's got style. And then the man known as the dragon, the man with the fire in his belly out of the USA via Latvia, Martins Lesis! Martins! And finally, the man who we just saw won the truck pull with the time almost two seconds better than any other competitor. A man who may well be the future of this sport. Give it up for the 24-year-old Matush Kalishkowski. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, these are your strongmen for today. Now, Matt, before we let these guys go back and get warmed up, what I want to point out is it's really hard to tell truly how enormous they are. Now, when I walk up in front of these guys, I want you to realize I'm six feet, about 290. They're going to make me look like I'm some sort of a miniature. So check this out. Do you truly get a feel for how large these guys are? I, like I said, just under 300 pounds and six foot. I look like I still have yet some growing to do. So these guys are truly, truly monsters, modern day gladiators, ready to go to battle. I gotta be honest, I thought I saw Ostashevsky go for some mustard. He was gonna put you in a bun and eat you. That dude looks hungry. That's hungry. not surprising at all. To, I just look like dinner to these guys. So here we go, we've got one contest down. Kalishkovsky took first place in that. Now we're moving on to the log press. These athletes, JF Caron is out. He's already earned his spot. Congratulations, sir. These eight are gonna be vying for this title today. That's it, literally, we've got tons of action for you today, guys, and the best part is, when they're not going full bore, we've got entertainment in between every one of these strong events. Non-stop action. So
Picture perfect day in Santa Monica, California, as the Arnold Pro Strongman USA competition continues. Thanks for being with us, everybody, today. I'm Sean Woodland with Dr. Bill Crawford, and we are set for the second of five events today. It is the log press, and that is what awaits the athletes, 385 pounds. The log press has to be one of the... One of the, the one of the most difficult events that you can do because you have got to clean the log each and every time, and that that requires a lot of stamina as well as tremendous strength. These uh, we're ready to go, so we're getting out. Uh, the uh, first athlete, I believe, they're warmed up. So you'll notice that when the athletes pick up the log, they'll reset themselves and turn their hands over, and they'll roll the they'll roll the log back. It gives it a little bit of kick and puts it into place. But unlike a barbell that's right under your chin, this log is out further from your chest. Brian Clark! Brian Clark will be up first. The order of this event is determined by the results from the prior event. Clark finished ninth in that last event, so he will lead things off, and that means the man who won the event, Mateusz Kieliszkowski, will go last, and that can be a huge advantage in an event like this. Yes, absolutely. Uh, Kieliszkowski winning the event and convincingly, that puts him in the driver's seat after the first event. And um, and Matius is also, Kieliszkowski is also very good at the log press. He's had very good results in training, he told me. Brian Clark needs to do very well in this event to make it for that ninth place finish in the fire engine pole. Where you feel this event mostly is, surprisingly, it's not in the shoulders, it's actually the abdominal muscles. Trying to support this weight over your head is, is getting it up to your chest each and every time. And after it gets overhead, you have to hold it, and that's, that really gets your abdominal muscles. And they will not get credit for partial reps. A rep will only count once they have it locked out overhead. And they have one minute in which to get as many reps as possible. And Clark's still looking for his first press. He has it up, but he just can't support it. No, not, not able to get it up. It's 385 pounds. And they're going for reps. Just 15 years ago, this was the absolute world's record in this event. Ravensburg Madison was the first to lift this 175-kilogram log. The crowd's really behind him. Clark will not be able to get one repetition. Again, he has to win this event in order to get to the Arnold Classic in March in Columbus, Ohio. This just shows how heavy these implements are, that, a, that an athlete of this ability and strength has this much difficulty with this kind of implement. Jerry Pritchett getting ready. Where did Clark really struggle on this? Well, notice how he resets. He's just not able to get it up and over, get his hands to turn over. And believe it or not, you just want to get your, your wrist to pull back and up up a little bit. Sometimes it helps to redouble your legs, to rebend your legs, but that's quite difficult with the log. So you really got to get those wrists active and get, the, get that log up to your chest quickly. Jerry Pritchett, who often trains with Brian Clark, is up next. Pritchett in eighth place overall after that fire engine pull this experienced strongman really needs to come across with this event he finds himself in a little bit of a hole getting an eighth place eighth place in the in the truck in the uh, fire engine pull Pritchett looking at his first rep and he can't press it overhead got it up quickly And Pritchett is going to call it. So he's withdrawing it. So Jerry Pritchett is relatively safe as far as the Arnold Strongman Classic is concerned as we take a look at his one and only attempt here. So as you see, he's able to get the log up quickly to his chest. It looks like he had some separation from his chest, but just couldn't get the, the initial phase of the lockout. You want to get it past your nose, and from there you can start the second phase of a press. If you can't get it up to the, uh, past the chin and up to the nose fairly quickly, 
then it turns into much more of a struggle because then you've got the, the implement in front of you and it wants to dump forward. Lano Heinle will be up next. Heinle has already qualified for the Arnold Strongman Classic. And this event is similar to one they will face in Columbus with the Austrian Oak, but that log's 70 pounds heavier than what they're facing today. Yes, yeah, so notice he's, uh, he's, he's, really, he's really getting himself ready. Sometimes you want to, you, some of the athletes will actually uh, cough out so they can span their lungs so when the log gets up to their chest. Yes, yeah, first rep. First rep good for Ronald Heinlein. He is now your event leader. Now notice how when he gets it to his lap, he bends over into the log a little bit and then rolls it back quickly. Two down, down for Heinlein. Look at the judge. He needed that down signal. He was walking around up there stabilizing, waiting to get the So you have to, you have, to have the weight overhead, stabilize at arm's length with feet stable before they give you the down. Heinle going for three. Not quite, not quite able to get it stabilized. Did get it past his face, but it wasn't on the way back. So still two reps for Ronald Heinle. 15 seconds to dig deep, get that third repetition. Every rep counts. And just can't lock it out, but an impressive performance for Ronald Heinle, the six-time Estonia's strongest man, who started weightlifting and powerlifting when he was just 10 years old. That was that was a great effort. You notice that the uh, the uh, attempts that he actually got the, the implement overhead and locked out. He got it over his face quickly, and the times that he didn't get over his face quickly, it actually then fell forward. And that's that's one of the one of the technical points with the log. You want that momentum to go backwards, just a bit over the face, and that lines you up in, in line with the body and helps your leverages so that you can get the implement overhead. Matthews Ostaszewski up next. Sixth place after the first event. Trying to get back to the Arnold Strongman Classic for the second time in his career. Last year he finished 10th. Not able to lock out the press, so Ostrzeski shaking out his right arm, and he's not going to make another attempt. And Ostrzeski is in the same boat as Brian Clark. He has got to win this entire competition in order to get himself to the Arnold Strongman Classic. So I think he had somewhat of a shoulder issue. He really didn't. He really wasn't able to get it up. Sometimes when an athlete grabs the the front of their uh, their shoulder area like that when pulling up a, a heavy implement like this like a log press it's sometimes their uh, the proximal attachment of their bicep it's not truly their shoulder so keep an eye on yes yeah, so this is a tremendous amount of strain on your uh, on your biceps and and your forearms as you pull the implement up the Nachos Belshock out of Slovenia up next Last year, sixth overall at the Arnold Strawman Classic. And he is one of the three men who is tied for the lead in the point standings. Those points, based on where you finished in the other qualifying events. This beautiful implement, the Slater log. Very balanced implement. There we go. No problem for Belshock to his shoulders. And the press looks relatively easy. Very good. So one down. Very good. The two components, getting it to his chest and, and then getting it over to space to complete the press. Both went very, uh, very efficiently. We also noticed that he's getting some hips and thighs into the second second phase of the lift. Ronald Heinle is the man who has the repetitions to beat, and now Belshock is tied with Heinle. A little, a little, a small, quick dip with the legs. You can't dip too much, and then you're, and then you're leaning forward too much. The crowd behind Belshock as he looks to take the event lead. This is his third attempt. 
And like Heinle, he just cannot make that third lift. So he and Heinle tied for first place. Great performance from Machez Belshock. Fantastic performance. You can tell these athletes are really trained on this implement. Very heavy implement. It's a little bit longer than uh, than typically uh, you, you'll find uh, with this uh, with the log press. There, here's the second rep. Notice he keeps he keeps that form where he has a little bit of a leg drive, gets it over the face, and now we can lock it out. And that's a tremendous amount of pressure when it gets over your head. Here's Jitz Kramer out of the Netherlands. Third place after one event. And Kramer needs to work himself to the top of the overall leaderboard, but one of the men who needs to win the whole competition to get in. Has never been to the Arnold Strongman Classic, looking for his first career appearance in Columbus. He's going to need three reps in order to win this event. Oh, he couldn't get the clean. He's going to bow out. Yes. He's a very tall athlete, and in, and sometimes uh, the taller athletes can have difficulty with these with these implements as they start out. Well, he he like Kramer just couldn't figure this thing have, out. Yes, he does dip down, but he just doesn't have he doesn't have the coordination uh, of the effort from his thighs with his with his arms to get it up to his chest. It's not just pure strength; it's also a matter of of how uh, how efficient you are from one face to the next. There's Martinez Lises. Lises is very strong overhead. He told me he's had a very good training cycle and is very motivated to win today. Yeah, grew up in Latvia before he moved to California when he was 20 years old, and he used to train by lifting stones at his grandparents' farm, and he has the log shouldered, but now struggling with his first press. He needs to get his face, needs to get over his face and back over the head. We got a repetition. At least he sticks with it and one is down. No man has gotten more than two. Not just Belshock and Ronald Heinle, the two men who have completed two successful lifts. There he goes, second clean. Much more efficient with the clean. Oh, At least he can't close. get the second press. Very close. You got to wonder how much those first two attempts took out of him on his first rep. That's exactly right. You, you only have so much time. If you'll notice, he did have the turnover the, of the wrist. Got it quickly and efficiently to his chest. A quick dip, but just can't get the implement back over his face. And there he gets it back over his face. And he's able to get leverage and get under the implement. One good rep for Martins Lisi's, a man who has already qualified for the Arnold Classic. And here comes your current leader after one event, Ratchis Kieliskowski, out of Poland. Getting some last second instruction from the head judge. Needs three reps to win the event, two to tie for first. And right now, Jerry Pritchett and Matches Belshock are cheering for this man because if Kilosh Koski wins this event, both Belshock and Pritchett are the other two men to qualify for the Arnold Strongman Classic. He's quite good with his overhead. He told me. So. Oh, give wow. me a break. Wow. That is too easy. Unbelievable. Keeler's Koski. Unbelievable. Someone check that log and make sure it's the same one the other guys were using. One rep down for Keeler's Koski, and he has plenty more in the tank. And there is wow. two. So just like with, with putting a big stone on your shoulder, he's a very explosive athlete. He doesn't need to regroup. He just takes it straight from the lap and straight overhead. This for the event win. Two events, two wins for Killers wow. That puts him in the driver's seat. He is on a tear in Santa Monica. That puts him in the driver's seat, no question about it. I'll have to say, just like last year with the Stone Press, I have not seen this quite. I've never seen a log that, that size handled in that way. 
I mean, no pause. Now, this is his third rep. He's tired here. This looks better than some of the guys that we saw in their first rep. Absolutely. And still stuck with that style of going straight from the lap overhead. That is unbelievable. So he's done two things in the last calendar year, in the last within the last year that I've seen, I've never seen elsewhere. Fantastic effort. Hillerskoski continues to look very impressive here at the Arnold Pro Strawman World Series USA as he has won two of the five events so far. And that is good news for both Machos Belshock and Jerry Pritchett. Ronald Heinla and Belshock each get two, and Martins Lees is the only other man to successfully lift that log as five men are unable to complete a repetition. J.F. Carone has withdrawn from the competition. He has a hamstring issue, and not a problem for Carone right now because he has already qualified. Two events are down. We have three events to go. And up next, we'll be talking to Brian Shaw as the deadlift is coming up. Stay with us here at the Arnold Pro Strongman USA.
back at the Santa Monica Pier in beautiful Southern California for the Arnold Strongman USA competition. We are through two events getting set for event number three. It is the last man standing deadlift firefighter competition going on among some local firefighters from Santa Monica. Being joined right now by a man who has won the Arnold Strongman Classic three times. He is Brian Shaw. He has already qualified for the 2019 Arnold Classic. How are you feeling now as you get set for that event? Yeah, I'm, I'm feeling really good actually right now. I mean, it's uh, it's always kind of a fine line of, of making sure you're healthy, making sure the training's on point, and making sure that the end goal is peaking at the Arnold in, in uh, the, at the first week of March, really. With such a limited time now to get ready for that event, what do you focus on with your training? Well, I mean, basically I'll, I'll start to back off a little bit of the gym stuff and start to do more of the actual events. So that'll that'll take the priority uh, kind of here for the last six weeks. You finished second last year to Half Thor. He is here today. Yeah. Obviously, he has a big target on his back for you. What are you going to have to do in order to beat him in Columbus? Well, he's he's going to. I mean, in all honesty, he's going to have some great events this year with with the events they've chosen, um, and he he'll be tough to beat. I mean, we're we're going to be in a battle again. It's going to be head to head, you know. So so it's not uh, the the key is really not dropping any points. And making sure that I come in um, ready to, ready to fight. Yeah. You didn't get the highest mark, but I gotta say, I want also, you uh, Brian, your sister, I know that you're competing against all the other straw men, but also at some start. level you're competing against history. Right Four-time TWI World Strongest right Man, three-time Arnold yeah, Champion, too many world records and open competitions to to count. What do you think about that? Well, I mean, you're you're exactly right. It's um, it's legacy, and uh, you know what what I have established over, you know, gosh, more than a decade now of, of doing the Arnold and uh, and competing a world's strongest man. And, um, you know, it's important. It's important to leave that track record, you know, and to uh, to chalk up those wins. I mean, it's something where, you know, I don't I don't necessarily feel like I have anything left to prove, but I still have goals. Right. So I, I still want to accomplish things. And, and um, uh, my competitiveness has not left at all. I mean, I, I only lost the Arnold last year by a very small margin. It's a couple points here or there. If I would have last, lifted my last deadlift last year, I would have won the contest. It, it was that close. So it's it's kind of picking apart what can I do better? Uh, how can I come in better this year? And, and um, that's what goes through my head in training and, and uh, in preparation. Well, not a lot of weaknesses in your performances, so it just comes down to what you can actually improve on, and then it turns into that continued competitive fire. Yeah, yeah that, that's it. If you have that competitive fire, for me, I'm constantly thinking about it, how I can get better, what I can do better. I mean, there was... Uh, like I said, a couple events, I was I was disappointed in my deadlift last year and disappointed really with the stone to shoulder event. I really lost a lot of points on that one. So, you know, it's, it's cleaning those things up, making sure that I'm ready uh, to perform. And it's, it's going to be fun. It really is going to be fun. Yeah. You mentioned the deadlift. That's the event that is up next year. It will be a little bit different of a format than we saw uh, in Columbus, Ohio. This is a last man standing format. They're going to start at 700 pounds and each competitor needs to lift every weight they will increase in alternating increments of 50 pounds and then 40 pounds so where you had a lot of strategy that came into play in columbus here it's all about you just got to go out and grip it and rip it yeah i mean they're they're uh, they're gonna call the weights they're gonna you know it's just a rising bar so you've just got to get the lift done and move on to the next round from a mental standpoint if you're an athlete competing in this how does that differ from what you guys did uh, in columbus with that strategy involved yeah it, it's it's uh, drastically different you know, because in Columbus, you're calling your own weight. So you're looking at what the next guy might pull of what he's potentially written down for the next lift. So you've got to stay ahead of that. And there's a lot of moving parts to that. Whereas this, you don't have to necessarily think as much. It's just go out and lift the weight and uh, move on to the next round and try to get through every lift as efficiently and easily as you can. Brian Clark will be up first. Here are your standings after two events. Matthias Kiliskoski is your leader over four points over Martin Thesis, who has already qualified. If Kielich Koski hangs on to win this, he, Jerry Pritchett, and Machaj Belshock will all advance to the Arnold Classic in Columbus in March. Brian Clark is a guy who is up first with just one point in the overall standings. He needs to basically sweep these final three events. He has got to win this competition in order to get himself to the Arnold Classic for the first time in his career.
this is an event that tests the, the body's total strength. A lot of people say body power, but this isn't how fast you lift it, it's just getting it up. So this is a, this is a total body strength lift. And typically, there a couple of uh, a couple of uh, points aside, it's really who's the strongest deadlifter. Yeah, that's. I think that's the thing that that um, you know, a strong man, you're not judged on how you actually lift the weight. It's just finishing the lift. So, you know, as opposed to powerlifting, it, it, you get it. You get three white lights. This is simply just a down call. So you have to get it from point A to point B as easily as you can, and uh, it doesn't need to be pretty. It just needs to get done. Well, another beautiful part about this is that the uh, that the judge really doesn't participate in strongman, except just to have the, the put down signal. Yeah, that's it. I mean, you're, you're not looking at lights, and uh, it, it really is just lift the weight, get the down call, and move on. Brian Clark up first, the starting weight, 700 pounds. So they're allowed they to use uh, straps. They just want to get through without wasting too much energy. And this bar is a, much different than what we saw at the Arnold Classic last year with that elephant bar. Yes, there's not a lot of give in this bar. It's a raw position. steel bar. has a deep all knurling. Got straps on. Wow. Easy. Easy. So no problem for Brian Easy. Clark as he is through 700 pounds. Remember, each athlete will lift this weight. As soon as you fail, you are done. Jerry Pritchett, it's his turn. That looks pretty easy. Uh, we're just starting out really kind of a warm up for most of these athletes. So if you've got a little bit of give in the middle of the bar, that allows for the uh, the, in, the the weights, the plates on the end to actually start to uh, give you a little bit of momentum to, to bring it up. This bar is pretty stiff. It's, a, it's six inches longer than a normal bar, but that's about it. Jerry Pritchett up next, 700 pounds on the bar. This is a man you've competed against quite a bit. Yeah, Jer Jerry's... Uh, very much known for his deadlift ability, so I'm sure that he's going to be looking to uh, try to win this event. He'll, he'll definitely need the points. And Pritchett makes that look light, and he is through. Yeah, with the with the setup like this, you know, the warm-up equipment in the back, a lot of people don't realize that the warm-up equipment in the back can be drastically different to coming on stage here. So a lot of these guys, their first lift, they're coming up, they're getting a feel of the platform, obviously getting a feel of the bar, and trying to gain that confidence with that first lift. Get that one done, you kind of you kind of let out that sigh of relief, and then you get dialed in for the next lifts. So we saw uh, we saw Yitze, uh, Yitze pull off his, uh, kick off his shoes, he's in sock feet. That's to decrease the uh, distance he has to pull the bar, and as a tall man, that's important. 700 pounds for Kramer. 725. Oh, wow. Very easily done. Just Brian, I was just commenting about how deadlift is different uh, with straps a little bit with strong man. The, the approach is to put your feet out a little bit wider um, and also to have a little bit wider grip typically. Yeah, start cool. with your hips as opposed to your back. Well, that's exactly it. I mean, the straps, the straps are certainly a, uh, a game changer because Effectively, it takes the grip this out, the and it allows everybody to pull with a double overhand uh, placement, which means that you can set into the lift a little bit more, and like you said, then try try your best. A lot of guys, a lot of us are so strong to our hips uh, and our legs that starting the bar off the floor in that position, it, it will really help a lot. This is Martins. Good pull. I believe he pulled over 900 pounds last year at the Arnold on the Elephant Bar. So he made that 700 pounds look pretty uh, pretty easy. Rono Love next. Another man who has already locked up a spot in the Arnold Strongman Classic in Columbus this March. Yeah, yeah, Ron Ronald's a, a great deadlifter, actually. He's pulled, he pulled some very big weight, so I expect this to be pretty easy for him. Yeah, no problem for Heinle as this 700-pound barbell is proving to be an informal warm-up for most of these men. Yes, I believe he placed third in the 2015 uh, World Deadlift Championships. Um, and, he's, and you can see those hip flexors popping out through his shorts. I mean, that's a, that's a sign of a big big puller. Yeah, Ronald uh, is a guy that... Um, for whatever reason, some guys still underestimate him a little bit uh, with these events, but I expect him to be right at the top uh, with this deadlift competition. 
Lacho has Bell Shock up next. He's using his straps. He's getting strapped up. There are different styles of straps. Uh, there's the figure eight straps that, that have become popular for some. The shorter straps, thinner straps, longer straps. It's really the preference of the strongman. The further that distance is, the heavier the weight's going to feel to them. So you watch. They're dragging it straight up their legs. Bell shock is through. So, uh, so far, everyone's looked pretty good with 700 pounds. So again, just the uh, the socks, uh, just to decrease the, the, the how high you have to pull the bar up. If you can take a half inch or an inch from not having soles on your shoes, and uh, and and actually be able to uh, decrease the lift that you have to pull the bar, because that can be a big inch because you have to lock the bar out. The other one too is that personally, uh, I know a lot of big deadlifters say that if they the less they have on their feet. They can feel their feet pushed down on the floor as opposed to try to stand up with the bar. Yeah, I'm, uh, as, with regard to the socks, I mean, it, it, again, it's personal preference. And, um, you know, for me, uh, here's Keelis Koski. That's good. I know, I know he's been working really hard on his deadlift, so I'm interested to see how he does uh, with this contest today. But finishing up that thought of him. Uh, yeah, this looks really simple. I remember last year in Columbus, he came off the floor, I think, after failing a lift, and you were right there talking to him. What did you say to him at that point? Mateus, is, uh, he, he has big expectations for himself. He's, he's uh, very competitive. He's young, um, and he, he tends to get down on himself. He's, he's really hard on himself. Uh, so it's more, you know, something for me as a veteran. I see how much potential he has. And, you know, sometimes a, a pat on the back from somebody like me and just saying, hey, buddy, you know, just keep your head up. It's coming, whatever. I'm, I'm actually, I really want him to come train with me uh, in Colorado. I'm, I'm trying to get him out for that. Uh, it's crazy with our schedules, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's just a pat on the back. That's really all it was um, at that point, you know, just saying keep your head up. You can see that kid has tons of potential. Uh, he's, uh, he's incredibly athletic. He's fast. He's strong. He's got... He's got all the tools, um, and it, it'll be exciting to see as, as he grows into his frame. It'll, it'll be really exciting. 765 pounds is now on the barbell, and Brian Clark is back up. This is his second lift. And still no problem for Brian Clark as he is through. And that'll give way to Jerry Pritchett. I think uh, I think Brian uh, kind of used the, uh, the let his shoulders drop a little bit, which is okay if you keep your lower back straight. And then you just have to stand and pull back some. Uh, some really big deadlifters have used that style in the past. Yeah. You can see here Jerry's got a, a flat shoe on. I'm, I'm the same way. I actually prefer pulling in a very, very thin shoe. Um, just always been a personal preference. And um, I could go in a lot more detail, but actually get more power out of it. 765 for Jerry Pritchett is no problem. He stays alive. So every man... Is still alive here in this last man standing event, the third of five events here. And and being six eight, Brian, that's a long way to pull. Yeah, it totally is. I mean, the height the height of uh, of some of these guys, you know, getting down to a nine inch deadlift bar is is quite a challenge. You know, it's it's uh, definitely a lot lower for guys like us when we're taller. Um, seems like almost a deficit pull at times. Absolutely. Look at him. He's, at he's down. Uh, he's he's really talking to himself. He's getting himself going. There we go. This is Yitz Kramer at 765. 765 for Kramer. And that wow. was easy. Wow. Big pull. Very quick. That just shows that uh, a lot of these guys are way off from getting up to their, their maximum lift. We're going to see a big deadlift today. Yeah, that, that looked really, really comfortable for Kramer. And a 6'5", six, 6'5", five, six, five, uh, athlete, that's that's quite a lift. Yeah. I do know that, uh, what else can you I do know that uh, there's a lot of discussion about how fast you can pull a lighter weight to develop power for a bigger deadlift. Yeah, it's... Uh, it's funny, sometimes, uh, you know, you see guys 
That looked really good for Martins there. Yeah, you see guys pull the lighter weights, and sometimes they're very, very fast. And then when they get to the bigger weights, they almost can't shift into that, uh, for lack of a better term, like four low gear and, and really grind through a heavier weight. They almost have to pull it faster. They don't pull it. And, you know, other other big deadlifters, they'll pull even the lighter weights a little bit slower, but they can just keep going. As the bar gets heavier, they pull it the same exact way. Yes. And all the guys are out there helping each other. Look at the hip musculature on uh, Rauno. He's a very terrific deadlifter. And, you know, the, uh, the the idea that, Brian, you would like to have Kayla Skofsky come train with you, an active competitor, and these guys are over on the side talking to each other. Strong men really want each other to, to do their best. You only want to beat your competitor if he's at his best. Absolutely. I mean, that's that's true for me. I can say 100%. I don't, I don't want anybody hurt or banged up. I want everybody to bring their top A game, mm. and then we'll find out who the strongest is. And I, I really believe that, that, if not all the guys, the majority of guys feel that exact same way. Yes. Here's Matos Belshock for his second lift, 765 pounds, still on the barbell. Good lift for Belshock. Belshock's been dealing with a little bit of a, uh, a hip issue, and I was talking to him uh, earlier about some of the training, and, and that's been affecting him a little bit with his training, and um, he's trying to figure out what's going on, and something like that can really hamper uh, your training, especially when you're talking about big weights. So I know that um, that, that would probably be easier for him. Uh, so he's he's been battling through that at least in training. So I would imagine he's just so. Literally starting to get all cylinders working. He's just Koski up next. This is your overall leader right now. Yes, he's dominated the first two events. Um, but but to be able to uh, have a solid showing in the deadlift would really lock him in towards the last two events. Give him some support, Kaliskoski at 765. Got it. I think he pulled a little more smoothly. I, I think one thing he did, he put his uh, he put his heels together a little bit and put it and pointed his toes out, kind of uh, giving some giving some quads off the off the bottom of the lift. Some guys do that. Yeah, yeah. There's there's a lot with uh, the, a lot of people think the deadlift is just picking the bar up, you know, and standing up with it. And there's so much little detail in this lift. It's it's ridiculous. I mean, I'm I mean, I know for me. I, I watch video weekly on myself, trying to analyze what I could do just a little bit different. You know how my feet are, hips, knee placement, back, so hip, you know, just across the board. So it's a very technical lift, especially when you get up to the bigger weights. There's not a lot of room for error. Okay, so this is 815 pounds. And Brian Clark's up, starting the next round, the third round, getting strapped up. He changed his pulling style a little bit. He let his shoulders go a little lax. Looking down. He's going to stand up. Double clutching. Pulling back. Wow. Great That'll lift. count for Brian Clark. As he stays alive and he is pumped up. He really, really wanted that lift. He really wanted to watch, watch how he... He starts off, amazing. he gets it to his knees, it, and then he gets over the knees, and he keeps pulling back, so back, back, he keeps pulling back, Jerry, locks Bridget. out. And Brian, that's a perfect that's example of what you were saying shirt. earlier. It One just has to get from point A to B. It doesn't have to be pretty. He just needs to get there. That's it. He got he got the down call, and he, he uh, chopped that up on the scoreboard, so good for him. I'd like to know if that's a personal best. Seemed like from his reaction it might have been. Yes. You know? That would be really cool if it was. It was. So Jerry Pritchett, who's a, uh, a scientist with the deadlift, I'm, he's got a lot of uh, things to say about the deadlift. But the powerlifting world record holder as well as the strongman world record holder in the past. Jerry Pritchett just mauls that weight. Very deliberate. Yeah, he's, he's a little different. He just had a straight pull. No hitching. Straight up. Feet out. He kept it a little bit more of a flat upper back when he started the lift. Okay, so uh, Kramer had a great lift the last round. Came off the ground really, really smoothly and, and uh, very efficiently. 
got his groove. I guess, uh, Brian, you know, the only way to learn how to lift a heavy weight is to lift a lot of heavy weights. Yeah, it, I'll tell you what, it's, it's easy, really easy with the lighter weights to keep really good form. But once you get up to a heavier bar weight, that's where you start to see your weaknesses and what you need to work on. Kramer, no problem, as we have yet to have a man bow out here. All eight competitors still alive here in this third of five events. Man, Martins man is like raw look. meat. Martins is right on the bar. He's almost pushing the other guy out of the way. He is focused. Nice. He's definitely ready to go. I, I know Martins has been working really hard on his deadlift, too, so he's going to want to put up a, a big result here. Absolutely. Looking to get back. To the Arnold Classic for the second time in his career. He's already qualified. He was there in 2017 when he finished eighth and at 815 pounds. Wow. At least he stays Very alive. Nice. You know, these uh, these Rogue barbells are really well made. I got a chance to talk to Bill Henniger, the owner of Rogue. Um, they, they work on tensile strength. They've given the athletes absolutely every chance to have the best result with these barbells that they put out. Yeah, there's a lot. Of, it's amazing, too. There's a lot that goes into a quality bar. Yes. And um, Rogue, Rogue does it better than anybody. They really do. Here's Ron Ohila at 815 pounds. Easy day for Ron Ohila. Wow. That's a very efficient pull. If we can go back to that and just watch him come off the ground. He keeps that bar, that, his weight is distributed right over the center of his foot, and he gets it to his knee in a really smooth fashion. And then once it gets to his knees, it's lights out. Yeah, he's, he's got a lot of power left in the tank there. Absolutely. There's Machaz Belshock, who struggled a little bit on his last lift. We'll see what he has left in the tank here for 815 pounds. He's trying to stay in this competition now in the third round. Everybody's looking really strong. Can't shake off for the next event. Bell shock. You can hear him getting fired up. You know, part of part of dealing with pushing through an injury. Bell shock has himself set. So now 815 pounds for the man from Slovenia. Oh, he's going to do a little barbell roll. It looks like. There he comes. There he comes. Oh. Bell shock would not get that one to go, so he will be the first man out here in the last man standing deadlift. Yes. So I, I have to say that that's, that's the first guy we've seen to have a rolling start on the deadlift. I know that a couple of other deadlifters like uh, Benedict Magnuson rolls the bar. Uh, Yoko Hola used to roll the bar. So uh, he really had, you know, you see his face there. He was really trying to get that bar up right there. He just needed that next three inches to get it to his knees. And also, you notice how the other straw men are, you know, saying, hey, man, you did a great job today, giving him a pat on the back. So this is a very important lift for Matus Kaliskowski. He's dominated in the first two events, and this would separate him from some of the other athletes who haven't been able to lift this. And 816 pounds was the most that he lifted at the Arnold Classic last year. This is just one pound less than that. Killers Koski nails nice. the lift. Very nice. It was a very smooth lift. I think he, I think he had a little more. Uh, he's got a little more in the tank, but he definitely had to put another gear on that. What do you think, Brian? Yeah, that was that was a uh, really important lift for him in in this contest because so many guys were successful there. He had to get on to the next round. We'll see what comes with the next weight. Like you said, I think he had to step it up a notch. But um, I think he's got a little bit more in the tank, so we'll see. So 855 pounds now, so they've gone up uh, by 40 pounds. So I guarantee he's won the first two events. He's used as a strategy. He's just... So it's another another piece of this. It's not. It's that you know what you know what weaknesses do you have? You have to eliminate your weaknesses, uh, Brian. For for me, I, I mean, I mean for all athletes that you know in a competition with multiple events, you've got to eliminate your weaknesses. That's and be consistent. it. I mean, across, across the board, my my rule of thumb for myself is, I want to go to any contest and be able to place top three in any event. Whether it's for max or reps or, you know, you're lifting a log or a dumbbell, it doesn't matter, you know. And that's, if, if you can do that in the sport of strongman, you're going to do pretty well. Jerry 
Easier said than done, though. Yes. I remember uh, Magnus for Magnus was a master at winning and not placing first, but maybe one or two bits. Sure, because he's consistent across the board. So Jerry Pritchett is up next as Brian Clark has decided not to make a run at this. So Clark at 8.15, that'll be his best lift. And now Pritchett moves on to 8.55 as the field starts to fit a little. I think Jerry's getting stronger. That was better than his last one. It's yeah, like he needs some weight on the bar to actually make <laughs> to make him get into his gears. That looked kind of easy, actually. Wow. I'd have to compare his pull to probably yours, Brian, and maybe uh, uh, maybe uh, Andy Bolton. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Jerry, Jerry's uh, definitely widened up his stance uh, quite a bit, and I think it suits him really well, obviously. He's, he's getting some great results. The one thing I will point out with this competition is that's already the fourth lift. And for some of the stronger deadlifters like Jerry, these aren't massive jumps in weight. So by the point we're over 900 pounds, you're talking five or six lifts. You know, that's uh, that's a lot of, of deadlifts. They would, for some of the stronger guys, they would probably rather have bigger jumps and get up to the bigger weight sooner. Yes, Kramer is up next. 855. 855 pounds. I'll have to say to this point, he's been the most explosive off the floor. He, re he really has. I've, uh, I haven't seen Kramer deadlift um, in a max deadlift event, so this will be interesting to see what he can pull. And there's Martins again. Just That was a great lift. Very explosive, very smooth lift out of Kramer. Great lift. Now Martins is up. And again, he virtually pushes the other athlete out of the way. He's really, really going after it. Needs this lift. There we go. At least he hits that. Wow. He looks better than the last lift. That was a terrific pull. Very smooth. I think he's finding that spot. Brian, would you yeah. comment on that? Yeah, I, I think that, uh, like you said, he's... This is a groove. I mean, when you get in your groove and you have a deadlift that gets a little bit out of line, it can look much worse. And then you add more weight, you hit, you hit your line right, and man, it, it feels great. So hopefully Martin's just found that line, and, and uh, the next weight will be the same way. So again, look at that musculature in the hips. Those hip flexors just bulging out as uh, Heinle gets down on the bar, straps up. Heinle finished first in the 2018 Arnold Classic Australia event, so he is on his way to Columbus, Ohio in March, and just rips that bar off the floor, no problem. So 855 looks light for Heinle. And that'll give way to Kilish Koski, and now we're in territory where he might start to struggle a little bit, but no problem for Heinle on this lift. Very smooth, very efficient to the knees, and just gets that up. He's got a great groove, pushing his feet down to the floor as opposed to trying to stand up with the bar. And I know that it's hard to see that, but if you're deadlifting, that's a feel that you get. Absolutely. That, that, that was really comfortable for Heinle. He's definitely got so some weight left in the tank. Just informed us, Sean, it's not 855. It's actually 860. We're going with the heavier bar than the Olympic. But you know why? Because this bar has to be five pounds heavier. Because it has to be a strong... Well, Kelly Koski getting ready to lift here. As he's your overall leader through first the first two events, he won the fire truck pull and then the log press just looking really impressive in event number two and a solid performance so far for him in the deadlift is gonna make another run of this thing. He's, he's got time. He's got time. He's gonna reset. Just breaks it off the floor. Kellis Koski, who is the overall leader coming into this event, will bow out at 8.55. Okay, folks, so you heard it. Brian Shaw is going to have him come and, and help him with this lift. And it's training. Here we go. He's pulling. You know, he gave everything he had, though, in that in that attempt. Yeah, it's definitely not for a lack of effort. That's for sure. Uh, Kellis Koski is going to be down on himself, but... I mean, the exciting part with him is he's young, and the one the one lift that I will say takes a long time to build up is a deadlift. I mean, it, it, there's there's guys that it could take him 10 years to build up to a world class deadlift strength. So he has nothing to be nothing to be disappointed about. I mean, if he uh, if he keeps moving up year by year, 
he's going to get to a crazy good spot. So, you know, that's uh, he's going to be disappointed with that I, just because I know him. Yes. But, uh, you but know, he's, he's, his upside is big. You need to have a short memory as a strong man and move on to the next event. He's got two events to go. Oh, that's it. Yeah, absolutely. That's very, very true. 910 pounds on the barbell. Four men remain on a gorgeous day in Santa Monica, California. A packed house here at the historic Santa Monica Pier as Jerry Pritchett will be up first as we have moved past the 900 pound mark. Yeah, Jerry has actually deadlifted more than this weight uh, in a powerlifting contest with no straps. So he's definitely got this in him. Now we're kind of getting to the big prey, the big the big pulls at the end of the competition. That's it. Yeah, this is uh, the fifth pull. We're over 900 pounds. This will be great. That was very smooth. Very smooth. And when I look at Pritchett as someone who doesn't know as much about this as you guys, it's hard for me to tell that they've added weight on the bar. He looks the same through every single lift. Yeah, that's smooth. That's, uh, that's very true. You know, kind of like what I said earlier with the bar speed. Jerry's the guy that'll pretty much pull the same pace, even with some of the lighter weights. So it, it is. You're exactly right. It's tough to tell kind of what gear he's in and uh, how much he's got left because he'll pull the same way until he fails almost. So Kramer from uh, Kramer from Holland, uh, terrific, uh, terrific pull so far, very explosive. I think just with gas in the tank, I think uh, he and, uh, and Heinlein have been uh, very impressive. But, again, Pritchett just knows his stuff. Blitzitz is determined. Kramer needs to basically win this event. He's got to win the entire competition to get into the Arnold Strongman Classic. And he's looking good so far in the last man standing deadlift with the four athletes remaining. And that will count for yes, Kramer, 9-10. Fantastic lift. He had to hitch it a little bit. He had to hitch it a little bit. Okay, here's a look at it. I'd say technically got a really good start. Kind of yanked on the bar a little bit. I think you probably want to be a little smoother. That might have actually put him out of position. Rock his shoulders forward just that, that tiny bit. Yeah. Okay, here's Lissus. Got a roll. Pulling. Martins Lisi's through 910 pounds as the big weights are really going up. Really, really solid. That's, he's approaching his uh, the weight that he was able to pull uh, last year at the Arnold uh, Classic. Okay, now watch this. He's got his feet a little closer together. Does that dynamic, pulling the bar to himself. Some guys like that because they feel it, it livens the bar. And I think uh, some of the other athletes might pump their hips a little bit, Brian, to give that same sensation. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's really a lot of uh, a lot of glute power uh, bringing the hips through. So once you get past your knees, you really, really want to flex there and drive your hips hard. But um, you know, this is it's unique because some guys will come off the floor really strong. Some guys will lock out really strong. Everybody's strong at a different point in a deadlift, so it's, it's trying to not have any weaknesses as a team. Yes. Nine ten for Ron O'Hanlon. And Ron O'Hanlon is through 910 pounds, and he will stay alive. Yes, and he's got Arnold right in front of him. Very nice. Arnold can Arnold, Arnold can see the big lifts are coming. Over 900 pounds. Okay, very smooth and efficient right off the floor gets it over his knees even slings it down making a statement 950 pounds is next okay you know in 2011 brian at the uh, two, uh 2011 at the twa uh world strongest man finals yep. i believe zadruna saviscus actually set the world's record with like 965 or something uh yeah it was nine 970 i believe 970 yeah so uh, it wasn't it wasn't in the rain. No, <laughs> yeah. it was in the rain. It wasn't in this beautiful weather. Yeah, that's for sure. It was in the rain, not this beautiful weather in Santa Monica. But but uh, honestly, uh, that just, this just shows where we are. Yeah, this is a. I mean, you're talking in less than ten years. We've we've evolved to where this is just a standard weight. This is. I mean, it's world class. These guys, four four guys lifting nine ten, on to nine fifty. I mean, this is uh, these these people are getting a show for sure. Absolutely. 
This is the next step towards 1,000 pounds at 950 pounds. Deadlift specialist, Jerry Pritchett. Let's just, let's just watch and see what kind of, let's see what kind of uh, style he has on this one. If it looks like the other one's the same speed. And if I were a competitor, I'd be concerned if he just pulls it the same way. That means there's gas in the tank. You, you would absolutely think that for sure. 950 for Jerry Pritchett. Okay, that, that actually looked a little faster. He's getting a little serious. Um, very confident. Look, built that pressure in his feet, gets it up to his knees, and just stands up with it. That man knows how to deadlift. Yeah, that, that was a very, very solid lift from Jerry. That, that was awesome. Very good lift. So uh, this is kind of a scouting trip for you a little bit too, Brian. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we're, we're six six weeks out from the Arnold in Ohio, and, you know, I'm going to be competing against uh, a number of these guys there. So you could, you could say that. I mean, I, I'm kind of always scouting. I'm kind of always scouting. <laughs> but you're also talking about helping one of your competitors. This, you know, uh, Kalos Kossia to get that deadlift going. Yeah, I had uh, I had J.F. Carone, who unfortunately had to pull out of the contest. I, I would have possibly picked him to win this deadlift event today um because he pulled a thousand pounds with you in training he did he did yeah we, we got together last year and that was incredible yeah so i really personally like training with the guys um i love bringing them into my gym and you know just the energy you know you have yeah so you know, two Lissus guys is that up. strong is is uh it's, it's something special yes this is up with the next weight with the so so uh, Kramer looks like he uh, dropped out. It was a really he had a lot of struggle with the last weight. So uh, Martins is up, and that'll leave just three men: Lisi's, Pritchett, and Ronald Heinla. Nine hundred and fifty pounds. This is a big, big lift, and I'm certain this is a uh, it's a personal best for Martins as well. Martins has uh, has done a lot of great things in strongman so far, but you know this will be a new mark for him a deadlift. Notice how folks are sl the guys are slowing it down a little bit. They're yeah, stalking. He's, he's not uh, not attacking the bar. He's got to get his energy right. He's got to get in the zone. You can see him amping up. You know, he's every, everybody kind of has that routine to get into that that amped up spot to lift these kind of weights. So uh, Martins, you can tell this is a big weight for him because of the way he's getting amped up instead of just going up to the bar like he did before. Right. You want to drop all the inhibition that you have and, and, and get put yourself in, in, in overdrive. That's right. 950 pounds for Lisi's. Looking to stay alive and possibly win the event. He's giving everything he's got. Oh, oh they cannot get it wow. past his knees. So close. Great fight from Lisi's though so at 950 pounds, and that'll give way for Ron O'Heinla as now just two men remain as Pritchett and Heinla. That was a great effort. Now watch. Off the floor, gets it to his knees, crosses the knees. You know, does the lean back, but just couldn't get in position to hitch it back. He needed to he needed to pull it a couple more inches to get that hitch. If he could have got it a little bit further, I think he probably could have finished that. The other thing is he's, he's uh, wearing a knee sleeve, and it, it, sometimes with that bar, with the, the deep, sharp knurling, it can get caught up a little bit on, on okay. stuff like that. So. Well, this is a raw bar, and there and with you know with his foot placement, that knurling would get caught on that. Yeah, yeah. and that's so just that, enough. That could be a factor. I mean, you're talking Friction. 950 pounds. You know, you get caught up a little bit, you can't pull it. You know? Okay, Heinla's looked unbelievable so far. He's had great lifts. It's 950 pounds. And if Heinla can't make this, Jerry Pritchett's your winner. Yeah, I think I think Heinla's got this in him. If he if he gets it off the ground, I think he can finish it. Whoa. Okay. Well, he didn't he didn't get it off the ground. So they didn't get off the ground. That's a little surprising. <laughs> so Heinla bows out, and Jerry Pritchett, no surprise there, as he will pick up his first event win of the competition as he lifts 900. 50 pounds he picks he picks up a lot of very very valuable points brian and yeah and, he, uh, get Jer himself uh, closer uh, to uh, the goal of qualifying for the for the overall uh, arnold classic yeah Jer jerry needed that for sure yeah. you know with the overall standings it's important to uh important for him to perform in, in probably his best event yeah you know so that, i'm sure he's going to feel great about that so he, yes he, he did what he needed to and what he expected so i 
I would say that that was the result that he, that he was looking for. Yeah, so we're here absolutely. with uh, Brian Shaw. Um, you know, there are, there, are, uh, there are myths in the world, and then there are actual legends, breathing, living legends, and definitely Brian Shaw is one of them. So I, pre I appreciate as that. As a strongman fan and, a, and somebody who's watched his career almost the whole time, I'd have to say that um, getting a, somewhat of a front row seat to a lot of it's been fantastic. Thank you. Yeah, thank Brian, you. we really want to thank you for taking the time to stop by. It's a blast talking to you. Yeah, absolutely, Best of guys. luck in Columbus. Can't wait to see you throw down there, and best of luck with the training moving forward. I really appreciate that, guys. Thank you so much. Yeah. Jerry Pritchett is your event winner, 950 pounds. Two more events remain. The Rogue Sandbag Carry is up next at Pacific Park in Santa Monica.